All right, FNC. Oh, yeah. Cool, cool. Are we uh, you're not going to do like a character thing with it? or? No, man, we don't have a lot of time. Let's just um, run the normal stuff. All right, okay. just normal things. Okay, thanks. All right, shooter ready? Yep. Stand by. We want to hurt no one. We're here for the bank's money, not your money. Your money's insured by the federal government. You're not going to lose a dime. LAPD, down, down. If you've ever almost slipped off a ladder during infill to a second story roof while a bunch of green beans watched on, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys, like, and comment. The comment section is out of control. I will do nothing to control you. Get down there and find out why the comment section is the most important part of this channel. Gentlemen, ladies, everybody, this particular video is sponsored by Simply Safe. Big thank you to them. We'll talk about it more in the video. Of course, the biggest supporter of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world, 99 cents for the first month. Is it worth it? If you buy products, yes. If not, no. All right, ladies, gentlemen, and my often forgotten, but not by me, Gen 2 Glock 17s. Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about a very, very interesting rifle. And that is the FN FNC. Talk about a rifle that has been forgotten by history in many ways. Now, as we always do before I start these videos, full disclosure, um, this rifle was not given to me by anybody. It was purchased um, by me with the support of my lovely Patreon people. Uh, so obviously I'll try to be as uh, non-biased as possible, but I'm gonna be honest and tell you guys that the FNC is my favorite rifle. Uh, ever since I was a kid, I've just loved the look of the FNC, how it looked, um, especially after I saw Heat when I was a teenager, I was like, this is it. This is the rifle that I wanna own one day. Unfortunately, due to the way import laws work and all that, there's just not a lot of them. And so the price has been continually uh, increasing since I was a kid. So right now they run around 4,000 to 5,000 or so, and that's for the semi-automatic models. Understand that when you get to the automatic ones, um, they're not that expensive, usually around 15 or so, maybe a little bit less, um, but it is a very desirable and very cool rifle. And today, we're gonna talk about why it's such a cool design. So to start off with, the FN FNC is an 8.4 pound <laughs> um, gas operated, long stroke, nice, uh, piston driven weapon. Um, it was released around the late 70s and was meant to kind of compete with the M16, AR-15, all those different rifles that were kind of beginning to gain popularity around that time. Unfortunately, it came a little too late and it never really gained uh, the steam that the earlier rifle, the FAL, had from FN. Because of that, it kind of fell into obscurity. It was imported in small numbers, but it just, 
it never really took off. That being said, it is, of course, still in use with multiple uh, militaries around the world. So didn't take off as kind of a uh, maybe a misnomer in this in this case, because the Belgian army uses the FN FNC to this day. Um, the Swedish adopted it and modified it and now produce it under license as the AK-5 and the AK-5C. All my Battlefield 4 guys freaking out right now. And Indonesia also makes a copy of it currently as well under license. So it is definitely still used, but it never definitely gained the widespread popularity that the uh, M4 and other types of rifles have gotten. Now that being said, what we're going to do is we're going to do a normal thing. We're going to go tip to butt on this firearm. We're going to see what makes it tick, what makes it so good, and what, and maybe why you might want to or might not want to buy it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So start off with the muff muzzle device so the muzzle device is an okay flash suppressor it's not that great but what it does do very well is launch grenades the primary purpose was the launching of 22 millimeter nato grenades and it does that very well beyond that it's not really a great um muzzle device to be honest it does keep your rifle on target but there's nothing really spectacular about this particular muzzle device so we'll kind of go with that. Now, moving back from the muzzle device, we have the barrel. The barrel is kind of interesting. I've heard a lot of people say that the barrel length on the FN FNC is 17.7 inches. And yes, the total length is 17.7 .7 inches. So when a lot of people talk about this, they say, wow, you have 17.7 .7 inches to really drive up the velocity on those 5.56 rounds. A little bit of a misnomer. You do have 17.7 .7 total on the barrel length. However, that's with the included muzzle device of usable rifled barrel that the slug is traveling down, you have closer to 16. Now, that is still a an excellent um, barrel length for the 5.56 cartridge, allows it to really reach a pretty good velocity, but understand uh, it's not that full 17.7 that you're quite expecting. Another interesting thing is because the FNC is kind of produced way back when, it uses an older rifling twist rate on the barrel. So we have a one in 12 twist as opposed to the one in seven that's commonly seen. Is it a problem? Actually, it really isn't. Most people are already shooting 55 grain ammo, which is what the one in 12 is great at. So for most people, you're probably not gonna see a problem when you're shooting the FN FNC. When you start moving to heavier, more modern loadings like the 77 grain and the 62 grain, you're definitely gonna see issues with the FN FNC. As far as the accuracy is concerned, there's a lot that goes into the accuracy beyond the barrel. Um, the gas system, is it free floated, is it non-free floated, harmonics, a lot of things come into play. Now with the FN FNC, it has acceptable accuracy for a military type rifle, because this was meant to just be an absolute beast and to power through a variety of environments. There are many AK-like properties in the FN FNC. You're not seeing wonderful accuracy, but you are seeing acceptable. So what I mean by acceptable is about on a good day for me, and again, I'm firing with a red dot, so I'm sure accuracy could be better. I'm getting about two and a half MOA at 100. That's more than acceptable for a military rifle. I believe it's three to four for a military M4. So understand it is good. It's definitely outclassed nowadays by free-floated AR-15s. So understand that, but despite all that, it's definitely more than acceptable for pretty much every use um, for which it could be applied. Now, a couple things about this. We do have a sling swivel out here on the barrel. You can see it right here. Spin that around. It spins, fidget spinner. Um, and then back behind there, we have these ribs. You can see them right there. So a lot of the questions are, what are the ribs for? Well, you can mount a bipod um, to this, and that was kind of the purpose of it there. You see a similar thing in the FN FAL. So that is what we have with the barrel. Moving back from there, we have one of the coolest parts, which is the stamped uh, metal handguard. Uh, that runs into the plastic handguard that is on the FN FNC. It's a very iconic look and in many ways reminds me of the FALs used by the Israelis um, during many of those famous battles. And I just have always loved, always loved the look of it. Just, it looks very provocative and very interesting. A lot of the older firearms in the 80s, in my opinion, have a very interesting look to them. And that is absolutely the case when it comes to the FN FNC. So I really like the way it looks. Now, of course, with the FN, FNC, when you're gripping it, you're gripping onto the plastic handguard right here. How does it feel? Uh, it feels like a plastic handguard, very similar to um, the M16A2 as far as its handguard was concerned. Uh, it feels like a very similar material. Now, you're not going to be gripping onto that metal because it will get hot. Now, that being said, 
during sustained fire, and I did fire this thing a lot when I'm trying to do my heat reenactment, it didn't really get hot. It felt pretty good. It kept pretty cool. So all this works very well in keeping the system cool. And that was something that I didn't expect because especially with AK type designs with long stroke gas pistons, you often find those pistons get hot. And um, I didn't really see that with this. Um, the way they have it designed, it just ventilates the heat very well. So that was definitely something that is a welcome design implementation on the FNFNC. Moving from the very cool handguard, we have the um, front sight. So the front sight is elevation adjustable and we have the two wings on the front to protect it. Pretty standard, the uh, sights are pretty good in my opinion. I like them very much. Right behind, I like them very much. Right behind there, we have the grenade launching sight. So if you click that up, you can then uh, have your sight so you can fire your 22 millimeter NATO grenades. Of course, when you're firing a grenade from a rifle, you need to use a special type of blank cartridge that gives a little bit more umph. You don't want to fire an actual bullet. The, the round won't detonate it, but you just, you don't want to do that. Um, and so how it works is when you flip this up, it actually shuts off the gas system on the FNC and diverts all of that gas into the um, rifle grenade. That way it can give that little ump, get it pushed off that barrel right there. So that is how that works right there. So again, the rifle will be pretty much a little bolt action gun. when You pop that front side into place. So understand that and why that is used. Okay, moving back from there. We have probably one of the coolest parts about the FN, FNC, and much like the FAL, they wanted you to be able to adjust the gas system on the fly quickly. As opposed to the incremental system that you had with the FAL, we have a simple two position selector for the gas system. So we either have all the way to the left, which is normal mode. So on the side right here, there's a small gas port and it vents off a little bit of that gas. So when it's in this position, that is open. And when I rotate it over, it closes over that gas port with a piece of metal uh, that surrounds the piston. Um, therefore, it redirects more of the gas. So again, to the left is going to be normal mode and to the right is adverse mode and you're just directing more gas into the system. A really interesting article was from the SWAT magazine in 1986. It talked about what rifle the Alaskan state troopers wanted to use in the extreme Arctic environments in which they had to use their weapons. Now, if you're not familiar, the M16 family rifles is not the best. Anyhow, they did a test with multiple different rifles, the Galil, the HK-91, the M16 AR-15 family rifles of Valmet, and the FNFNC and the FAL. Uh, pretty much every rifle failed except for the Galils, the Valmet, and the FNC. Now, of course, the FNC was in the adver adverse position, but my point being is that it's cool that you don't have to overgas the rifle. I know I talk about this a lot, but when needed, you can pop that into over, over into adverse mode and you can run through anything and you're fine. But for the most part, you can keep it in normal mode and it's going to run almost 100% of the time, except in those really extreme environments. So that way you don't have to always have the rifle over gas like your typical AK. So I really appreciate the engineering and the ingenuity that went into coming up with that very elegant and simple solution to a common problem in these types of designs. Good job, FN. When you look at the FN FNC, you'd be kind of surprised if you're only used to newer types of military rifles because uh, this is a very um, simple gun in many ways. There's no frills, there's not a lot of lightning that's done on it to make it a lighter rifle. It's simply built for strength. It is welded into place. So we have a stamped upper receiver right here with rivets welded into place and it is very uh, utilitarian in its design. In fact, the rear sight is also welded into place. Now the rear sight is actually very well done. We have both the 400 meter and the 200 meter aperture right here at the back. Um, of course, 200 meter being larger, the 400 meter being smaller, very similar to the M16 family rifles with their um, aperture system. It is windage adjustable and the elevation is done at the front sight post. So that is how that is working. Now, a, very, a thing that I find very interesting about the FN, FNC as a whole is that they went through, they went to great lengths to ensure that the operating mechanism was not exposed to the elements to keep it as a sealed system. If you've watched any of Forgotten Weapons videos, you'll know that having a sealed system can really help in those extreme mud type environments. So the gas piston itself is encapsulated. Um, and then if you look at the side right here, we have a spring-loaded dust cover. So that way when the rifle is moving and the bolt is moving back and forth, 
that spring-loaded dust cover moves up and out of the way as it springs back. It's a very interesting design. And to be clear, the Galil Ace now uses a very similar system on their rifles. It's definitely proven in many ways. So I really thought that was cool. And then when it's closed, of course, nothing can get in to ensure that this rifle isn't gonna malfunction. Now, many people are upset by the fact that the FNFNC has its charging handle on the right side as opposed to the left side, like the FAL, where there's a tendency to have to either use your firing hand or you have to either reach over or under to actuate that charging handle. It is definitely a pain. I do wish they would have had a left-handed uh, charging handle like, like they had on the FNFAL, but it's just me kind of nitpicking on that. Speaking of the action, I, I do want to talk about it for a moment. It's very AK-like. The long stroke gas piston is itself very beefed up and chrome lined to ensure that it's going to operate in a large uh, variety of situations. Um, the extractor is also welded into place and is not on the bolt itself. It's a very interesting, very odd design compared to what you typically see nowadays. And the whole point of it was to remove a lot of moving parts to ensure this weapon would just work in hard use environments. So you'll find that as you go through this, Many of the things about the FN, FNC are not refined. The safety isn't the easiest to work. The trigger isn't the best, but they do work in cold environments. They don't freeze up like the M4 or the AR-15 type of rifles do. So there is a rhyme and a reason to the madness behind the FN, FNC. Now, speaking of that, we're gonna have to talk about the safety. The safety is reliable. However, it is very awful. Uh, I am not a fan of the safety at all. In a traditional firing stance, you cannot really get that safety very easily, and especially if you're squared up. It's not at a very good position to where you can easily actuate it. So I find that I can do it in high port, I can do it in low port where, I have, where I'm able to get my thumb kind of a little closer, but unless you kind of have monster thumbs, you're really not gonna find yourself getting to that safety very easily. Now, that also goes into play with the magazine well. The magazine well is not beveled in any shape or form. You have to make sure you get that thing lined right up, and it's gonna lock right in. Now, on the topic of magazines, the FN FNC does have its own magazine. Now, I don't have one of the FN FNC magazines, unfortunately. However, the FN FNC accepts all Stenag magazines. That means or your typical ones for the AR family rifles, magpuls, what, what have you, they're all going to fit. Now, a very interesting thing about the FN FNC is that it does not have a bolt hold open feature. So, as we can see right here, we have an empty magazine, put it in, and if I rack the bolt, it's just gonna fully cycle. It doesn't um, hold the bolt back. And the reason for that is the designers believed that having the bolt hold open on the last round would introduce mud and you know ice and what have you, any amount of things that could possibly gum up the action. So they would rather that it just closes on the last round after it fires, it just closes up and you should be counting your rounds anyhow. So it is a philosophy, I understand why they did it. Of course, nowadays, most modern weapons are bolt hold open, but I'm not gonna really hold it against the FN FNC because it's so damn cool looking. Now a quick word from our sponsors. Of course, the sponsor for this video is Simply Safe. Simply Safe is great. I've used it for a long time. And why I like it is for a lot of individuals, there you don't have like the money to put all of that the cash down to buy a security system immediately. So Simply Safe is cool because you can piece everything together bit by bit as you need it. It's as low as 50 cents per day to get it all together. Uh, that allows me to add extra security where I need it, not specifically where it's installed by security folks. So if I need um, extra security around where my gun safe is, you know, a uh, camera, or even one of the new door locks that Simply Safe has, it gives you different access codes that you can enter in. That way you can know who's coming, who's going along. Security cameras, pretty good security. What's cool is again, you can handle both internal and external security on your house. I think it's a great option to have, um, especially with firearms. It gives you a little bit more peace of mind, especially when you're you know, at work all day and you're wondering, hey, did I lock or anything like that? You have instant you know, text to your phone letting you know what's going on. You can check in on things. I like that. It gives me peace of mind. I trust it, as do many experts. Definitely go check them out. Highly recommend it. Again, we can't thank them enough for supporting this video. Big thank you to Simply Safe. And we've kind of gotten as far as we can without talking about the trigger. 
So we're gonna do what we always do. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna ghost trigger together. So we're gonna put that safety into fire and we're gonna go to uh, Trigger Town right here, put on a little Unchained Melody and we'll try that trigger out together. All right. So starting off, you do have about a three pound pull into your first wall. From there, we have a lot of creep, a lot of creep, a lot, a lot more creep, way more. About a nine pound pull overall to pull that trigger. Okay, let's go ahead and feel the reset. It's pretty uh, responsive and right to the point, so I do like the reset quite a bit. Let's go ahead and feel that trigger one more time. Okay, about four millimeters of play. Hit our first wall. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven millimeters of play with about a nine pound trigger. That is not great. <laughs> the FNC uh, trigger leaves a lot to be desired in many ways. It's like the FAL trigger and it is just not that great. <clears throat> like many guns from the 80s, the uh, trigger isn't great. It's just the way it is. They wanted those heavy military type triggers. We're all used to those nice Geisleys or polished up AR-15 triggers with five pound pulls and you're not gonna get that with the FNC. You're not gonna get incredibly fast with that trigger um, in semi-automatic mode and that's just the way it's gonna be when it comes to the FNC. Okay, the grip angle, <laughs> we have the famous FAL grip angle. Uh, it is what it is, it's part of the look. You know I like the more shallow grip angles but like has been mentioned before, you can make anything work um, if you believe, right? If you train with it, you'll be fine. It's not the best for a more modern kind of squared up stance. Uh, it was definitely made for a kind of bladed stance and it works great for that, but it is what it is. What it is. There are better grips out there and you can easily replace the grip if you want to. Now, as far as sling attachment points, we have no QD or anything like that. We have like hook type attachments. We have one back of the receiver right here, on the back of the stock, and then of course up here at the front. So those are your sling attachment points. Finally, of course, we have the stock. So there are several different types of stocks out there. So we have the um, collapsible type socks right here. So if you notice when it's collapsed, you can still fire the weapon. You can still press the trigger, go all gangster with this thing. Um, Pretty easy to open up. We also have a fixed stock version of the FNC. It's much more rare actually, um, but I do very much so prefer the para type of look to this particular FNC. So I love the way that it looks. So the question is, what is it like to shoot the FN FNC? It's actually fairly soft. So I did much of my shooting in the adverse mode because I wanted to feel what it felt like to have this thing shooting in the worst possible environment, with the most amount of gas coming back. And it was really, really pleasant. I was, um, First time I shot it, I looked at my buddy and I was like, that's, that's quite nice actually. It's a very gentle push. Um, the recoil is pretty much in line with your shoulder. The problem with the FNC, like many other um, guns of this type, is that we're kind of used to the AR-15 type design where the stock is so high, so you're getting the gun really low into you. You can't get the gun quite as low as an AR-15, so because of that, you have a little bit more felt and perceived recoil. Despite that, the FNC is an absolute dream to shoot. Um, I love it. It is, of course, outclassed by modern AR-15s and stuff nowadays. But for the time, I think it was a really soft shooting rifle. And I can really appreciate all the design and engineering that went into making this what it is. Because for a extremely reliable, well-built, um, fairly okay military-type trigger rifle that points really well, that can function in the worst of conditions from the Arctics of uh, Alaska to the deserts and all that kind of stuff. The FNC is a very cool design. I just love it. After having owned one and shot one for a little while now, I can definitely say that it was just a little too late for its time, but it is still a very cool and a very effective rifle. If you have not fired the FNC, highly recommend to put on a suit and pretend you're Al Pacino in heat, take some shots with it. I love the FNC. It is a very cool rifle. If you have one, you won't be sad. But here's the thing. When it comes to the FNC or any rifle, it does not matter how cool it looks. What matters is, do you have training? Without training, none of this matters. So get out there and get training. There are tons of great guys out there who can give you training. We have Cogworks, Bear Solutions, Tony Cowden. We have 1-1 one, one Bravo, my buddy Brent. Uh, tons of great training resources out there. Haley Strategic, my dad, maybe. Get out there and get that training. Get better with what you have because the fact of the matter is, is 
The weapon is important, of course, to have a good, reliable weapon, but you are the ultimate weapon. Make sure you train your mind and your body. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Appreciate you guys so much. Cool rifle, one I've always lusted after. Glad you could be with me for this. I got nothing else for you guys. Really evaluate your time. Your time is literally the most important and finite resource that you will ever have. Time can never be gotten back. All I'm saying is take a look at that time as what it is, a valuable, irreplaceable uh, thing of immense value and spend that time in a way that reflects its value. Ladies and gentlemen, love you guys. I can't thank you guys enough for watching. If you've gotten this far, you are my ultra fans. As you guys know, we have two things to talk about. Survival Dispatch, which is a online resource for all survival stuff. I used to be a survival instructor way back in the day. Can't recommend that resource enough. A lot of really good articles on there. Get in there, check out Survival Dispatch. And finally, my Patreon people. Love you guys. Thank you for all the support. This channel wouldn't be where it is without you helping me. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves. I got nothing else for you.